On the Basis of Sex is a 2018 drama biography movie about the life of Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. She is one of the uh, oldest members on the court today, as well as one of the most liberal leaning. And this movie follows her life from the 1950s when she was at Harvard Law School, all the way into the 1970s when she took a case to court that really uh, fought for women's rights and making women equal to men under the law. Because at that time in uh, history, there was lots of laws on the book that kind of discriminated against women, and she really fought to change change that and succeeded and is a real cultural icon because of this as well as her uh, many years on the Supreme Court. Though there was also a documentary that came out earlier this year called RBG and it is about Ruth Bader Ginsburg's life as well and a lot of people say that documentary is fantastic and really good and better than this movie. But mind and you, I have not seen that documentary. I have went into this film not knowing that much about Ruth Bader Ginsburg's life, but uh, I still really enjoyed it. And I still might go check out that documentary later, but uh, full disclosure, my review is based on just watching this movie, not having that much background knowledge on her life. This movie is directed by Mimi Letter, who has a very wide and different and varied filmography. She's done everything from sappy kind of movies like Pay It Forward, as well as action movies where a comet's going to destroy the Earth in Deep Impact, as well as the HBO show The Leftovers, which I really like that show, but it's a very trippy kind of show. And then you have this movie, which is this big bi biopic, right? This movie is written by this guy, Daniel Stiepelman, who is actually Ruth Bader Ginsburg's nephew in real life. And this is his first job as a screenwriter. Now let's talk about the cast in this. Felicity Jones plays RBG, and you might recognize her from Star Wars A Rogue One, as well as The Theory of Everything, and I thought she was really good as RBG in this. She's very heartwarming, and she's very good at giving these thrilling legal defenses in court, and using all of these like legal jargon, but still being very entertaining. And I really bought her as like the hardworking RBG, and uh, everything she brought to the role. I thought she did a good job. We have Arm Hammer as her husband in this and I really like the relationship between these two characters in the film. Uh, they were really two, a couple that supported each other in every way, whether it be uh, from a relationship perspective, but also from a career perspective. So the husband really wanted his wife to succeed in her career, as well as vice versa. So they were really just supporting each other. I also really liked the daughter in this film, played by Kaylee Spaney, who some of you might remember from Bad Times at the El Royale. And uh, she was really good in this so she was growing up in the 70s and she's very kind of like a feminist woman and a teenage girl in that era and she's going to see Gloria Steinem uh, give speeches and we see this relationship between her and her mother and how they're kind of arguing but they're very kind of uh, arguing philosophically about things about To Kill a Mockingbird and what Atticus Finch like his character meant in that and if he was a good guy or not or various other things so like the relationship was really great between these two characters uh we have justin thoreau he was originally from the leftovers as well which uh because the director so tied in with the leftovers that's definitely why they hired him to be in this movie and he plays this guy mel wolf who is the head of the aclu in this movie and I thought his character was like a real jerk in this movie. He's like, is he supposed to be such a dick in real life? The, the real life guy he's portraying? Um, I'm kind of mixed on, on, on him in this movie. We have Sam Watterson as this dean of Harvard. And this guy, Sam Watterson, uh, I recognize him from being on Law and Order for like 15 years or something. Like that's the only thing I've ever seen this guy in or recognize his face from. But yeah, he's the dean of Harvard in this. And he is also really kind of a jerk and very sexist. But he's kind of our de facto villain in this movie. And when Ruth was at Harvard, he was really giving her a hard time. And then later on in the movie, he's kind of on the opposite side of this legal case that kind of changed history. We also have Kathy Bates in this for like two minutes. 
Kathy Bates is barely in this movie. She They shouldn't have even promoted her if she's going to be in it for as little as she was. But she was fine for the few scenes she was in. On to my positives. I thought this movie was very inspirational. It was trying to be inspirational, and it was. I thought the story was very fascinating and interesting. I liked following RBG's career, starting at Harvard and seeing all of the sexual discrimination she faced there because she was a woman. And then when she graduated Harvard, she, even though she graduated top of her class, top of her class, she couldn't get hired at any law firm because she was a woman. Because the other lawyers, they didn't want their wives to get jealous with having a woman around the office. So she couldn't get a job, so she ended up teaching. And then she was uh, teaching for several years, and then this, this case kind of came to her from her husband. And it was kind of this tax law case, which can be pretty boring tax law, right? Not very exciting stuff. But this tax law case was with this guy who was like a caregiver for his mom, and he wanted to get this tax deduction because he's a caregiver, and they wouldn't give it to him because he was a man and a caregiver can only be a woman. So Ruth took this case saying that they were discriminating against this guy because he was a man, and this is sort of like a Trojan horse way to kind of fight the inequality of men and women and all the laws that were on the books back then in the 1970s because if they can win this case then that means that there's all these laws that say women have to be this and men have to be this and it would kind of have to throw those all out and it was uh, a very big historical moment and it really kind of started evening the playing field between men and women and Ruth Bader Ginsburg was really uh, a pioneer in that so I thought it was a really interesting fascinating movie this movie can be kind of bogged down in these legal terminology but I think they handled it well they didn't talk down to the viewer like they used some like technical kind of jargon in this and still made it very interesting and compelling it was very fun I love the performances I really like this movie but Let's go on to some of the negatives. I read a lot of reviews on this movie because the scores are not the best for this movie. And I really liked it. So I was like, why are other people not giving this a high score? So the IMDb score right now is a 6.2. But you kind of just have to throw that out because let's face it, the politicization of IMDb sometimes with these political movies where one of the figures is either a liberal or a conservative you know, you kind of throw it out because people just vote one and they haven't even seen the movie, so it skews the whole score, unfortunately. When you look at the various critics' scores, some really loved it, some really did not like it. I read some reviews that say Felicity Jones' performance was fantastic, and other people that said she was horrible. I lean more so on that she was pretty good in it. Now, a lot of reviewers are saying this is a by-the-numbers biopic movie. One reviewer even said this is like a Lifetime movie, but uh, I think that's going a little bit harsh. This was much better than a Lifetime movie, but I, I, I understand the by-the-numbers biopic complaint that people are saying because in a way this movie is good in many ways i like the performances uh the directing was fine the writing was fine but nothing was maybe extraordinary nothing was like the greatest cinematography ever or the best performances ever but everything was good and i think that is really the only complaint you can give this movie is that maybe it wasn't extraordinary but it was definitely good and uh yeah and i still really enjoyed it so i would give this movie for myself an 8.5 out of 10. i just was really drawn into the story and i felt really inspired coming out of it and i thought the story was really fascinating so the the only negative is the is the fact that it's kind of by the numbers and it's kind of safe throughout but still a very good movie and i highly recommend it.